Hi, welcome to my doll customizing journey. My name is Josephine and these are my creatures. A couple of months ago I made Vicky. She was inspired by post-apocalyptic styles such as Mad Max and Fallout. Because June is Pride Month, I decided to make her a girlfriend to accompany her in many adventures. Vicky is some sort of a squirrel, so I decided to make her partner a rat. And because rats are very suiting for the whole post-apocalyptic theme. I decided to work with a Goulia doll because of her grey skin tone and I just love her face mold. I ended up not using her own body but instead worked with this headless Twyla. You will know in a couple of months where her head went. Subscribe so you don't miss it. I cut the hair real close to the scalp and then used pure acetone to remove the factory face. When I was taking off her lip color I noticed a hole in her mouth. I think she had been a victim of another smaller doll customizer before me. To take off the head I use boiling water. Leave the head in for a couple of minutes and then it's super easy to just tug it off. I scrape around the inside of the head with my needle nose pliers. The rest of the hair and glue you can just pull off after that. I'm going to reroute the doll with this gorgeous nylon hair from Retro Rolls EU called Peacock. If you wonder why the sudden lighting change happened, it's my new ring light. I have a couple of videos pre-filmed so the yellow lighting will come back for a while, but for now it makes a massive difference, don't you? I fill the head one plug at a time, I stab new holes where I want the hairline to be. At this point I was finishing the reroute on the hairline and the vinyl ripped! Oh, I was so mad at myself for not being careful enough. But the good thing is that the rip can be covered with her hair. Next step is to secure the hair from the inside with glue. I make homemade flocking for her side shape by chopping up yarn in two different colors for added dimension. I glue it on using water soluble glue. This glue is something like Elmer's glue all I think. I let it dry for overnight and then come back to brush off the excess and trim off some of the straggly bits. Remember the hole in her mouth? Because of this I came up with the idea to give her 3D teeth instead of just painting them on. I widen and reshape the hole with my Dremel tool. The teeth are going to need some extra support, so I push in a little pin from her chin up to her nose. Then I start sculpting the teeth. I just realized that at this point she still had her human ears! Oh, it would have been a lot easier to take them off before the hair. Mm. I prep her face with one layer of Mr. Super Clear. I start by sketching her eyes. I want to practice drawing different facial expressions on my dolls. So I am giving her 
a winking expression, which I think will add to her character. After the sketching, I go in with pastels, some pink to her lips, black for eyeshadow and grey to sketch in her eyebrows. Flipping the doll helps you get a better angle at the brows. I go in with blue pastel to give the brows more color. Some definition to the nose and pink blush to the cheeks, forehead, nose and chin. I use white acrylic paint to paint the teeth and sclera of the eye. It's good to draw in strokes to mimic real brow hair. After a fresh coat of sealant, I darken all the lines with my watercolor pencils. If you want to see more of how and when I seal my doll's face during a face-up, I recommend to watch my in-depth face-up tutorial. Just click the eye in the upper right corner. Detailing the lips with a couple of lines can really up your face-up game. For the eye, I decided to match it to her hair and go with a piercing blue. To make the iris color a little lighter in the center, I use a brush and some water to move the pigment around. I add a tiny pupil with black pencil and shade the eyes with grey pigment lifted off from the pencil. The inner corner gets a touch of red for realism. A dotting tool actually meant for nail art makes a great tool for adding the eye shines. Now it's time to make her a proper pair of rat ears. I start with wire to support the ears. I use two part magic sculpt as the meat of the ears. I give them a very quick sand before going in with paint and a little bit of pastels. I seal the ears with MSC off camera. I poke holes for the ears and just push the ears in. I didn't fix them in place more than that and they grip onto the vinyl just fine without glue or fixing them from the inside. I want her to match style-wise with Vicky, so giving her the same paper lashes. I really like the look that the paper lashes give. It's more edgy. I saw Delightful use this on her Litten doll and I like the look so much. 
I want her hair to have some texture, so I braided it and boil washed it. Then it's just a matter of unraveling the braids and cutting off the straggly ends. Now to her body. Twyla has the little sister body type which is great because I want her to be the shorter one of the two. I also want her to have wider hips and a straight posture. So I use my handy Remo tool to cut off the doll in two places, the back, the back of the neck and the waist. I don't cut all the way through the neck because I want to bend it straight. I do this because I have glued the neck part backwards in the past. Oops. To reconnect the torso, I fill the cavity with hot glue and insert a thick wire. I roughly fill the area around the wire with hot glue because this way I will save on my sculpting medium and prove the doll being heavy as a rock. Here I am bending the neck. I've heated it up with my heat gun. Now it's time for the sculpting medium. I cover all of the hot glue and start sculpting the details I want. I remove the molded panties and rough up the surface with a sanding sponge. I hate sanding, it's my least favorite part of the body mods, but after purchasing these sanding sponges, I feel like it goes a lot quicker than just with regular sanding paper. I switch on to a drill bit and add the hole for her tail. Painting doll bodies can be a little tricky, but I feel that patience and thin coats of paint help me out a lot. I use Liquitex Basics acrylic paint. Check the description box for all the info on materials. Then it's a coat of Liquitex Max Medium to, to protect the paint job and prep for the pastel layer. I have not been able to find the matte varnish I feel everybody else is using, so this will have to do, even if I feel like it's not the best for the job. I give the body a quick blushing on the joints, belly and feet, before I move on with her tattoos. So while I'm making the tattoos, I thought about talking a little bit about why I chose a girl couple for this video and what pride really means to me and why I think it's important to celebrate pride. Um, I chose to do a girl couple because of my lovely sister who I love oh so dearly. Um, she's gay, uh, she has a lovely girlfriend and I just watched the Try Guys Pride video where Eugene is coming out like officially admitting that he's gay and it totally reminded me of, of, of my sister 
and when she came out and we were walking on a beach we had been walking there quite some time I was getting a little anxious I wanted to leave it was a little bit cold and and she wouldn't leave and I I just noticed there was something like bothering her that like she had this lump in her throat and she was trying to to say something to me and I was like like what is wrong with you <laughs> you are acting so weird do you have some sort of cancer or what is going on and I was like just spit it out so that we can leave and she was like you know I like girls I'm gay and then she was so afraid I was like going to hate on her and being like disgusted and I was like you know it doesn't change anything I love you just as much as I did a second ago so that's why I decided to make a girl couple and that is why I think it is very important to celebrate even though it's 2019 I think we still have a journey to cross for acceptance and I think Pride Month and celebrating it in a different ways really helps that so let's celebrate Pride This top was so easy to make. All you have to do is to cut a long rectangular piece of fabric, wrap it around the doll's torso and mark where the darts need to be. Then cut and glue the darts in place. I paint the edges black to make the top more finished, but this step is optional and depends on the fabric you are using. I close the top with lacing it up. I use some sewing thread and two needles. This gives the top so much detail, so easily. I'm making a pair of cargo pants for her, so I start with the pattern. To make skin tight clothes for dolls, I find this cosplay method to work really well. It gives you a very accurate pattern to work off of. I transfer the rough tape and kitchen wrap pattern to paper and fine tune it a little bit. I cut the pieces out from the fabric. This is actually the leftover pieces from my boyfriend's pant legs after I shortened them for him. I start with adding different kind of pockets for detail. Next is sewing the side seams. Then it's time to close the pant legs. The next step is a little bit tricky and I didn't film it very well, but what you need to do is to stuff the other pant leg inside the other one so that the right sides are touching. Line up the back aka butt seam and sew it closed.
Then you can turn the pants inside out and add the waistband. I use a long piece of fabric with a little bit of stretch to it. I add a clasp for closure and some leather details for added coolness. Here I'm adding the leather details. Also, for the sake of coolness, I made this little laser pistol out of craft foam and Q-tips. Because I feel like laser gun and tattoos are not giving me enough coolness, I add some armor to her arms. I use the sleeves off of some factory clothes and make the armor pieces out of craft foam. Then we jump back to the past because it's easier to group things together for the video than go in the order I filmed them in. So I cut a length of wire and then cover it with Laura tape, but you can use bandage tape as well. I cu cut strips of fabric to cover the wire with. The fabric sticks to the tape and helps me to keep wrapping it. I fix the fabric pieces in place with some sewing thread. I also like the texture it gives to the tail. Wrap tails are usually a little scaly so it plays in nicely. Now to the shoes. I went, I went with this rock and roll inspired ankle boot style. Here are the pieces you will need to make them. I start with the inner sole. To keep it from moving, I fix it into the doll's leg with a little bit of tape. Then I glue on the tongue of the shoe. Then I start gluing on the actual shoe part. Then I take off the shoe and add the pin as the base for the heel. I put the shoe back on and start lacing it shut. For this I use sewing thread and two needles. I cover the toe area with glue and cover it with another piece of fabric. Then it's the outer sole. I color the inner edges with a marker because after the sole is in you can't paint this part. I glue on the outer sole and shorten the pin for the heel and add some details with a strap.
I sculpt the heel with the same magic sculpt. I use different kind of sculpting tools and water to smooth out the surface. After the heel is cured, I paint everything black. I gloss the heel and sole with nail polish. This also protects the paint job underneath. The last step left is putting her head back on and adding her tail. And now we are done! I have decided to name her Rogue because I'm a huge Star Wars fan and I think it has a nice ring to it when paired with Vicky's name. Thank you guys for watching and happy Pride Month! Subscribe if you haven't yet done that, like this video and leave a comment. I would love to know what you think of Rogue. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Josephine's Creatures and check out my Etsy store. And an update, I will be posting a new video on the last Saturday of every month. So, until next time, bye!